Ooh, banana. Hello? Monkey! These calls from Microsoft support are getting really weird. What? What was that? Hi, you tap. Uncle Al? What the fuck are you doing here? Nah, I was just, just in the neighborhood. Hiding from the police. Thought I'd swing by, bring you the good word of the monkey. Why were you hiding from the police? <laughs> monkey. Holy shit, yeah, Donkey Kong! Wow, actually, come to think of it, I've never actually reviewed any of those games in this channel yet. I mean, I'd love to review it with you, Al, but I actually don't even have a copy of my own. Don't worry, you can borrow mine! Hey, thank you! Fuck! Oh! Oh, it hit me so hard, my outfit changed. Oh! Well, I guess it will help me cool off, after all, it is. Tropical freeze. Oh. Tropical freeze, yeah. Well, why not? What do you say, Al? You're a Donkey Kong fan. You want to review with me? Why, yes. I would. Monkey! Monkey! Hey what's happening chaps, my name is Tap Chap and welcome to the Tap Chap Show. Donkey Kong is a video game legend. He and Mario have been on the front line since the 80s and have outlasted many other mascots that have come along, said hello and have then gone to live on the farm with Uncle Sherman. Then the bones were found. But Donkey Kong somehow survived and is still here with the latest game in his collection, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Now with a history as extensive as DK, I knew I couldn't tackle this game alone. So, who better to help me than the monkey master himself, Uncle Al. Hey guys and gals, it's me, Uncle Al. I, I made some stupid stuff, you probably shouldn't, you probably shouldn't watch it, you probably should just steer clear from that. I like Donkey Kong a lot though, and Tap Chap asked me to review, uh, and Tap Chap asked me to collab with him, so thank you for having me, Tap. This is quite the wonderful experience we have going here. And I'm honored that you take the time to review this game with me. But we shall faff about no longer, but it is time to review this kinky dong. Donkey Kong. A character nearly as iconic as the red-headed plumber himself. And why wouldn't he be? He was created pretty much at the exact same time as Mario was way back in the 80s. Though technically the Donkey Kong in that game was actually Cranky Kong. And DK Jr. is the current Donkey Kong. So that explains why DK in recent years has been okay with hanging out with Mario. It's Cranky Kong that's racist towards Italians. Shame on you, you decrepit dusty monkey. It's 2020. End the racism and end the hate, you monkey fuck. Actually, DK Jr. is the current DK's dad. Cranky Kong is the grandpappy. How do you know this information? I'm just well informed on the subject is all. Might, might have stolen some medical records. Why? Question me again, and I'll cut you. Moving on. Donkey Kong has had his fair share of games in his career, but arguably his first major break was on the SNES, with the game that, for many, was their first interaction with the big monkey. Right, Al? Man, let me tell you, my very first video game was Donkey Kong Country, and ever since then, I've been one heck of a monkey enthusiast. Pretty big monkey fan over here, if I do say so myself, not trying to brag. 
I love all the games, uh, except for maybe some of them in the 2000s. I just try to block them out of my memory. But the Donkey Kong Country games, man, dude, those are some solid games. They, them's is, them's is good. The music, the atmosphere, the levels. I mean, dude, I mean, it, it blows so many other platformers out of the water. There's nothing out there quite like Donkey Kong Country, let me tell you. As for myself, I've known of Donkey Kong for quite a while. I've seen him many a time growing up, but never fully got the character. Mainly because my first Nintendo console was a GBA SP, then followed by the original DS, which I still own. Look at this relic. It even looks like one with the slight bit of damage on it. I'm getting distracted, aren't I? My first real interaction with Donkey Kong himself was actually when I got the Wii back when it first released through, yet another first for me, my first Smash Brothers game, Brawl. It was through that that I got to know the Big 8 himself, along with Diddy the Titty, and even a few of the other side characters through their trophies. Wow, remember when they were a thing? In fact, looking back at it, it kind of reminds me of... Oh my god. So really what I'm trying to say is that only now in 2020 did I get my first real hands-on experience with a proper Donkey Kong game. And believe me, I know how important the Country series really is. After all, Donkey Kong was the first title that really let DK shine, and managed to let him differentiate himself from Mario by having original ideas, while also being very familiar and sticking to the Nintendo formula. Especially after the more simplistic games like the original Donkey Kong from 1981, Donkey Kong Jr., and the math variant for all you dorks out there. <laughs> Ooh. Donkey Kong's one of those rare examples of characters that hasn't really had much of a presence over the years, but has somehow still survived up until now. I mean, take one look at the Wikipedia and you can just see what I mean. Especially in the early years of gaming, mascots were always in the line of fire. If they hibernated for a while, they would usually end up... ...sleeping. Permanently. Nintendo have a pretty bad habit of leaving everyone in a DK drought. I mean, even back then, it's the same thing. I mean... <laughs> I guess some things never change, I'll... <laughs> Why, Nintendo? <laughs> Why? Why don't you make any more monkey? Uh, Al? You haven't made a new monkey in six years! Albert? Fuck you, Nintendo! Alberto? Oh, Nintendo, why? Allison? Why? 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 So, d d Donkey Kong Country... 1994 was the year that changed the lives of all these damn dirty apes. With the first DKC game, and it was revolutionary. Rareware, the developers behind Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Perfect Dark, and GoldenEye 64, and various other titles, did the impossible and were able to get 3D models working on a freaking SNES. 3D characters and enemies on a pre-rendered 2D background. Many of the kiddies in the 90s had never even seen this before. Yeah, so like I said earlier, uh, Donkey Kong Country is my very first video game, so... You know, you don't really, you don't really think too much about what you're seeing as a kid. But man, you know, you compare it to a lot of these other Super Nintendo games that were out at the time, and like, it's no competition. The pre-rendered 3D graphics are absolutely stunning. Even to this day, you know, I mean, it's obviously very dated, but there is still this vast uniqueness to the look of the game that still stands out in, in uh, you know, the sea of video games that are out, even today. The country games now have their own distinctive look. No other game looked the way DKC did, and anyone could take one look and know what game they were looking at. And Rare kept that look for the next two games, DKC 2 and 3. Then the next game came along, Donkey Kong 64, for the Nintendo 64. Well done, you genius. How'd you figure that out? And then came the various other games of all different genres over the years, as well as, of course, over the many famous DK droughts. I'll breathe, man! Oh, just. I just. I just. Wow. Talk about being obsessed with a particular game franchise. It wasn't until 2010 where gamers were graced with the triumphant return <laughs> to a well-loved series of DK games with Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. With everyone's favourite characters finally making a comeback in a way that those 90s kids all remember, all with new mechanics. That one kickstarted an all-new saga of DKC games, with two being exactly the same in said saga, with the game we're talking about today, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Originally released for the Wii U in 2014, we ended up getting a port of the game for the Nintendo Switch, the version we'll be talking about now. But what's the story of Tropical Freeze? Well, one fateful date in the year 2011 Donkey Kong and his family have gathered for another annual reminder that you're one step closer to death. Are you okay? 
Nope, I'm having a crisis. Like, why are we here, man? Like, what is the purpose in life? Why do we say we're all right when we're clearly all left? Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze's story takes a slightly different approach than previous games. It's a little different this time. We're not trying to recover DK's banana hoard or save one of his companions. No, this time it's DK's birthday and everyone is here. And by everyone, I mean three of them. Titty, Diddy, and a wanky Kong. When all is not right in the forest, we fly away and find a literal army invading. A huge Viking ship comes floating by, being manned by stumpy looking penguins. With their leader at the helm. A huge and intimidating abandonment. A bit. 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 A hairy fucking walrus. Named Frederick. The villain in this game, a, a huge and villainous looking snow creature, is called Fred. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. Could you imagine if any other scary villain had a name like that? Oh my god, look out! It's Steven! Silly names aside, he's actually a huge arsehole, and ends up taking over DK's island. He just looked at DK's shack and said to himself, He plants the ship down on the island and has a moment of self-realization, learns who he really is, and has an Elsa moment as he learns to Let it go, let it go. Here's a stupid fuck ton of snow and freezes the whole island. Meanwhile, the Kongs land a few islands away and are understandably fucking fuming. And off they go in a mad sprint to beat a bitch to get their home back. And all that on DK's birthday. Wow. He really is a cunt. So yeah, the story isn't as deep and convoluted as something, say, The Legend of Zelda. But what do you expect? You're playing a game as a giant cartoon monkey. You want a proper story? Go play the first of us. So as you can see, this game pretty much follows the DKC formula to a T. Very simple intro, getting out as much information as possible without an overly long intro. Guess it's the exact opposite of my videos. <laughs> I mean, what? Taking five minutes to get to the actual point of a video? What am I? A fucking asshole? <laughs> I'm fucking hilarious. But you'll be happy to know that after this point is where the actual review begins. Right after I tell you a story. Being part of the Country series of games, Tropical Freeze is a classic 2D platformer. So it's got the common staple of old school platformers. You know, various different themed overworlds and levels within them and shit. All of which being totally distinctive. You can take one look and know in a second which world you're on and how far into the game you are. Each world takes on a new climate or goes for a distinctive style, mimicking a few real life continents. You've got your tropical jungles, beach stages, windy mountain areas, and there's even one set in... And the map layouts are all different, and look very nice. But when you get into the worlds themselves, then it's upped by 10. Everything in this game looks amazing, dude. It blows my mind that this was a Wii U port brought over to the Switch. Sometimes you just forget what the Wii U could do with the underpowered hardware at the time, but, uh, you know, it still looks phenomenal for a six-year-old game. Oh! Oh, God, saying that out loud. Oh, I feel old now. Fuck! Oh. The amount of detail that's in this game is unbelievable. I know, right? Look! This may be the first DK game I've seen where they've actually made him look furry. You can nearly see individual strands of fur. I've never seen this monkey look okay. so good. Look! It's even got a fish that gives you a dirty look like you just shot in a sink. This game has everything. The game as a whole has such an air of quality to it. The textures on everything look so clear and crisp. Even things all the way off in the distance look so clean. No pixelation, no jaggies, it's all totally smooth all round. Um, of course it would be. It's a stupid, kitty 2D platformer. Come back to me when they've got The Witcher 3 running at 150 FPS with HDR at 8K resolution, and then I'll be impressed. Do you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? There's no room for bullshit in my house. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is a platformer fan's wet dream. I would know, I'm a big platformer fan myself. The gameplay is what you've come to expect from the 2D platformer genre, only amplified by the astounding polish wrapped around every facet of this masterpiece. It pretty much looks and plays like the classic DK Country games of the years past. Like the classic games before it, you just have to get from the start of the stage to the end, and progress to all the levels until you reach a boss at the very end of the board you're on. It's the typical Donkey Kong affair, you just do the shit to make the thing and finish the oak. And shit. A lot of the mechanics from the previous games have been brought back for this one. DK has his normal jump, he can climb on vines, we even have a little bouton to make DK roll like a bowling ball. 
Some of the levels have the iconic barrels to get DK from one plane in the stage to another, a transition from one segment to the next, or moving deeper into the background to carry on through a level. DK can also use his huge monkey hands to pound on the ground, which can be used to stun enemies. You can even pick up and throw a few of them this way too, which is kinda neat. Or it can be used to interact with certain things in the levels, such as smashing boxes or dirt blocks, flipping over wooden boards to find hidden areas where the collectibles are hidden, or to pull on these little pegs to shift something in the stage. Be it say a tree or a platform to progress through the stage a little further, or to open up these yokes that open up to give you hearts, which you need to keep on top of, because DK can only take two hits before he becomes deaded. Or you could get bananas which make their return as the main kind of collectible in this game. But you can also collect these big ass coins and the classic Kong letters make a return too. You have a sort of things to do as you explore the stages, and quite a lot of them can be well hidden, some even needing specific requirements to reach, such as using an enemy to bounce higher to get to one, usually only having one chance to get it unless you reset at a checkpoint, or using an enemy to hit targets to open hidden doors to access areas to find sneaky ones. Oh, you thought you were being stealthy? <laughs> Fuck you! It's quite a bit of work to collect everything, so you completionists out there will have a decent checklist to fill out. And speaking of classic DK... Things... Oh, call me the Segway King! <laughs> Tap, help me. We can even see the return of the classic companion barrels. As you travel through the level, you'll find a barrel with initials on it, and they'll represent the corresponding companion that's inside it. DD is Diddy Kong, DX is Dixie Kong, and CK is Cranky Kong. Playable for the first time ever, I might add, and all have different abilities to aid through the trickier parts of a stage. Some levels might set you a companion, but others may give you this spinning barrel that'll rotate through them all. You can either wait for the barrel to spin on its own, so you can pick who you want, or you can use the X or Y, or the bumpers, depending on what control scheme you've got set, to slap the ground to control the spin yourself. You can't have a DK game without them. The companions are a big part of the ape's identity. You can't have DK without including the others. It's like having Mario with no Luigi, a Sanic with no tails, Tonal Trump without his toupee, and they all feel great when you use them throughout the levels. It's the little things like that that really show the level of detail the game has overall, from all mechanics being refined, to classic nods to the series, and just the graphical and atmospheric details on the overworld or the levels themselves. In some cases, entire worlds have an ongoing theme like the savanna. You start rolling out and it seems like everything is going alright. In one level, a powerful storm comes rolling through, bringing with it twisters and massive tornadoes that are throwing obstacles and wildlife all over the place. You'll notice these fiery porcupines? I believe? I don't know. Flying through the air because of the tornadoes and in the next level, the entire savanna is on fire. These worlds are telling a story. It enhances the immersion to an extent that you usually don't see in these types of 2D platformer-like games. A sense of scope and immersion is only further enhanced by the game's legendary soundtrack. Oh yes, of course. The music in this game is on point. The tracks are phenomenal. This whole soundtrack is a banjer. As, as the kids say, right? What you mean that word is out of fashion? It was only being used last week! There's an even mix in the soundtrack in this game. I mean, you've got the new songs for the game, of course, but you also have remixes of the classic songs from the previous games that older Donkey Kong fans know and love. Am I right, Al? There's nods to some classic tunes in there that old weathered fans like myself will recognize, and some some uh, some classic tunes that are thrown in there that, uh, you know, they're, they're in just about every single Donkey Kong game. The kind of jingles that uh, jangle my giblets and make me feel... Fizzy. The new tracks are very good though, they're all bouncy and quirky, and really encapsulate the 2D platformer feel. I also love how every tune in this game matches the location in every aspect, which really lends a hand to building such a wonderful atmosphere to each level you progress through. No two levels sound the same, which is a real show of talent on the composer's part. Managing to keep all the songs from a particular world, all the same feel, but having a unique song for each stage. All of these of course are brought over from the original Wii U version of the game. I don't think it's a secret to anyone that the Donkey Kong Country games have legendary soundtracks, and this game is absolutely no exception. I'm not super knowledgeable on music in general, so I don't really know all the terminology to really fully articulate how I feel about the music in general. Let me just tell you, it is absolutely magnificent. I don't know how else to put it. Ambient! <laughs> that would certainly be a word for it. The DKC games have always had these wonderfully immersive tracks that suit their respective levels so unbelievably well, it's almost impossible to imagine them with any other soundtrack. While Tropical Freeze certainly has that, the game itself opts for more of a cartoony aesthetic than its Super Nintendo game counterparts, so the music isn't always trying to be hyper immersive necessarily. That said, you won't find a bad piece of music anywhere in this soundtrack. 
David Wise returns to compose the music, and I cannot understate just how much of a mad musical genius this guy is. He brings his A game to Tropical Freeze, and it shows. Hands down, one of my all-time favorite video game soundtracks. So far, it seems like Nintendo still have a firm grip on the DKC formula, despite Rare not being part of the development team anymore. And you'd think that would affect the quality of the game, seeing as the original team who made the first few games so legendary had nothing to do with it, but you'd be wrong. Even down to the mix of level variants, there's just the right amount, as there's plenty of regular type stages here to keep all you classic DK fans nice and happy, and just like before, there's enough variety here to keep things fresh as you progress. See, these levels don't piss around, and if you aren't ready, Tropical Flea... Topical... Tap, blah, topical Fleas... See, these levels don't piss around, and if you aren't ready, Tropical Freeze will slap you silly. Your mastery of the controls will ultimately determine just how much you struggle in the levels before you. See, each level is masterfully crafted, with every platform, obstacle, enemy, you name it, meticulously placed for the full, hardcore platforming experience. I mean it too, every obstacle is organically woven into the world in some way or another. Take for instance, this sawmill level. Starts out as a typical minecart stage before slicing up your cart into a boat, then back into a minecart. Or you'll end up being chased by a huge ass saw blade. It has a flow to it, a theme that is strewn throughout the whole ride. Every few levels you may get a vehicle stage, once with the classic minecart levels, and even one or two where you have to guide DK through a stage on a rocket. I like that these were brought back, and I think they handle pretty well. They really freshen up the game with how they're spread out. They come in just in time to change things up before you get bored of the same level types over and over again. I like how they take into account the weight of the minecart, or how gravity differs with the rocket. The physics are well thought through, and speaking of that, the physics in this game are spot on. The difference you feel between this game and, say, a 2D Mario game is nearly immediate. Donkey Kong's weight feels so accurate when he jumps and moves about. He sort of lunges and lumbers about as he skips along. There's no mistaking him for a little mustachioed man, that's for sure. He controls just as you think he would by looking at him. There's a sort of shift when you need to correct your placement in midair, and you can see and even feel that it's a little slower than Mario, because of how much heavier DK is in comparison. I love that attention to detail like that is considered when Nintendo makes games like this. They could have just kept it the same like in Super Mario Bros. Wii U Deluxe Extra Large Super Size Mucho Grande Mega Blocks Edition. But they didn't. They made changes to keep things fresh. Ah. I do really appreciate the attention to detail, it's just... I just struggle to get used to it, and it makes it frustrating and difficult to enjoy sometimes. He hates Donkey Kong! Sees his livingness! I absolutely adore with a passion how this game handles. You run, you jump, you bounce, you climb, you roll, you swim, and that's all fine and diddly doodly. But what makes every action that you perform as Donkey Kong so incredibly satisfying and fun is the fact that this ape controls so darn gracefully. You would imagine an 800 pound gorilla to feel about as graceful as a tank, but nah, not here. Donkey Kong is tight. The, the, the controls. You fiend. From land to sea, there's a level of precision that makes Donkey Kong just so gratifying to play as that is thankfully accentuated through the immaculate designs of the levels you traverse. They're well and truly impeccable. Jesus Christ, okay, just, just when I say it's frustrating, I don't mean in any way that the controls are terrible, because they're not. I just can't, no matter how long I've played the game for, get used to DK's weight. Your jump timing has to be so precise because DK is that heavy. I forget that countless times and I jump, forgetting that he'll get plenty of upward momentum, but once he reaches the peak of the jump, he starts to come crashing down. So I've missed countless easy jumps because my timing isn't right, or my sense of how far DK can jump is not what I automatically think it will be. With Donkey Kong, you almost have to commit to a jump. While yes, you can make minor corrections while you're in the air, it's so much slower and harder to save yourself that most of the time, you'll even slip past the ledge you just left a few seconds ago starting the jump, so you're nearly better off just taking the fall. Then when I try to really focus on it, I begin to hesitate much more and have moments like Nyah, nyah, ooh, 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 oh shit, N not yet, ah, fuck! And I know, death is half of what a 2D platformer is. 
I'm not saying the game is bad because death exists, it's just frustrating playing a game that realistically is aimed towards kids and dying so many times in a single level. It kind of makes you feel like you've got the coordination of an amputee penguin. But it is a difficult game though. It just goes to show that it may look like it's more for kids, but it's designed for everyone of any age or skill level. I mean, you have to be on it at all times. And one miscalculation means a lot of, Oh, you bitch! <laughs> I'm just at a disadvantage because I can't adapt to the strange weight difference in this particular game. That's all. It just makes the simple things a bit tougher to do for me when I play this game. And it can lead to increased blood pressure, a rash developing on your left ass cheek, the urge to take an angry piss, and a moment of existential dread. That can affect your mood and can slightly spoil your time with the game. It's worse when you're feeling that way and you partake in the boss fights in this game, which are pretty damn good regardless. They actually have some meat to them. I know it's such a common thing now, especially in some of the previous Mario games. I know it was different in Odyssey. Relax, pal. No, 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 chill. 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 Calm down. Bosses in Tropical Freeze are a little more complex. Of course, a lot of them tend to be jump on them to win, but as the game goes on, some even have multiple stages to the fight, where their attacks are changed, or they add minions to the fight to clutter up the screen and give more obstacles to dodge. Or hell, even to be used as projectiles to fight the boss by throwing them back at them. They can be pretty challenging. I'm not gonna lie, I had difficulty with a few of them and ended up dying quite a bit. It's like the Dark Souls of Donkey Kong games. <laughs> There's a kind of bosses where your timing has to be spot on. Which I uh, really didn't help for me. <laughs> and really comes down to a lot of trial and error to learn some of the various phases of the fight and knowing what to expect to be able to beat them and some of them take more than three hits to beat which is nice because then tropical free seems to stand out compared to mario's boss fights what do you think of them al now hey now i'm not gonna lie to you the bosses in this game are great but man are they ever long as hell and if you die right before you unleash the final blow well sucks to suck you get to start the whole thing over again I had this happen more than once on the Owl Boss, who I think clocks in at one of the longer bosses in the game if I'm not mistaken, and it's downright annoying. That said, each boss battle in this game is quite creative in execution, I just think they could have benefited from being shortened down a little bit. Where I really start to take some issue is with the final boss, Lord Frederick. He's hard. I like that. But get this. If you pay attention to many of his movement patterns and attacks, you'll see that these are more or less direct callbacks to many of K. Rool's boss battles in previous DKC games. His ice horn is reminiscent of K. Rool's blunderbuss and the many objects that he can fire from DKC2. When he's hopping all around the platforms, that reminds me a lot of K. Rool hopping around the Gangplank Galleon of DKC1. When he goes to the background to throw things at you, that's like when K. Rool would enter the background of the K. Rulenstein battle in DKC3. It begs the question, why wasn't Lord Frederick just K. Rule? They, they even have the same body type, they're the same body type, but he, he lacks the same charm and personality that made people fall in love with K. Rule in the first place. That, <sighs> but I digress. <sighs> Maybe he'll be back in the next one. I mean, hey, the chance could be a lot higher now, Al. I mean, I'm sure Nintendo have taken notes after the unmatched hype that K. Rule brought when he was announced for Smash. I mean, who knows? I'd like to fight him one day, you know, in an actual new DK game that's not a port. Unlike this one. Which came from the Wii U! Oh yeah. That's probably one question you're all asking, isn't it? Is this version any different from the Wii U port? Well, I can confirm, yes. Yes, it is. Throughout the game, you'll notice this shop on the overworld. Pop on in and you'll visit Funky Kong! Now, he was in the game beforehand, but this time he has an important role for this particular game. Ah, uh, yes. This mode, if you don't mind me saying, is a little... funky. Would you like to die, Al? Yes, please. Life is meaningless. Well, that thread backfired quickly. This mode makes the game so much easier for people who just want to play the game and enjoy it for the fun of it, or just makes it easier for younger players, which is always nice. Gotta give the kiddos a fighting chance. Or for people who are shit, like Pep Chap. Oh, he didn't have to say that. That wasn't necessary. You fuck. This mode gives you an extra hit point, so you've got more of a chance of not bouncing your Joy-Con off the wall. <laughs> Funky Kong also has a double jump, which makes traversing those tricky platform sections much easier and just giving extra control to the player. He's also secretly a freaky fish monkey with hidden gills because he can breathe underwater without an air timer, meaning there's no more scrambling for air bubbles when the bar is running low. He also has a slick surfboard that he can use to bounce over the spiky spikes as an extra safety net in case you keep falling off ledges or you struggle on a more intense auto-scroller section. Overall, the addition is welcomed and I think it's a really good idea. In the end though, I don't really think it justifies bumping this game up to a, a full price $60 release. 
The original Tropical Freeze game launched on the Wii U at $50, and adding Funky to the game, eh, I mean, it, that doesn't really make a six-year-old port suddenly worth like 60 bucks, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? And I like Donkey Kong, but hey man, I'll, I'll slap it. I'll slap it if it needs a good slapping. And there you go, that's Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Overall, what do we think? Well, as a first game for me in the DKC franchise, I enjoyed my time with it. It's engaging, it's quirky, it looks great, and it controls very well overall. Presentation overall is really impressive considering it came from the Wii U originally. I mean, it runs buttery smooth, with satisfying gameplay when you get it right. Because that is the only downside for me, is just I really struggle to adapt to the game's physics. As good and spot on as they are though, I just couldn't adjust to it. I had too much muscle Mario on my noggin, and I just couldn't adapt. But that hasn't warped my mindset about the game at all though, let me just be clear on that. Overall, I mean, I, I love Tropical Freeze, I don't know what else to say. I have 200% of the game twice now, I'm working on my third time. If that doesn't scream passion and love and dedication and all kinds of other creepy stuff about a cartoon gorilla, video game gorilla, whatever you want, to, however you want, to, I don't, then I don't know what else to, to say. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I gotta say, Al, this experience was a great one. Not only was it fascinating to jump into a series that I've never played before, but it was also fascinating to hear the thoughts of a veteran monkey player as yourself. Yeah, man, thanks for having me on. I, you know, I'm always down to Top Kong. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't get any better than this. You need to play the other ones. Play the SNES games. Or at least two. Play Donkey Kong Country 2. That's the main one you really gotta try. Don't worry about the other ones. They're pretty good, too. But the second one is really good, too. Better than those other ones. I think I'm having a stroke. And I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to review this game with me. Yeah, I know, I know a thing or two about uh, about Donkey Kong. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a little bit of a fan. I don't know if you I don't know if you noticed. I, I I'm not uh, I'm not. I mean, you know, it's it's nothing serious. It's nothing. There's nothing crazy or nothing. I got some. I got a Donkey Kong right here. Do you want to see? Look at him. He adorable. He's been sitting up on my shelf. He's covered in dust, dude. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get allergies. All in all, if you're a fan of the Donkey Kong franchise, then this game is a no-brainer for you. And it's been out a while, so if you want a good time with the monkey, then you should pick it up when it's reduced. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Nintendo. What, what the, the fuck, fuck is, is your, your deal? deal? Hey, what's happening, chaps? It is Tap Chap here. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. This was a really long one, so if you made it this far, you're going to get a gold gold star. A little sticker just, just put right on right on your t-shirt. says number one on it. Like Smitty Werben Jaegerman Jensen. This is by far one of the longest videos I've done. But I do appreciate if you made it this far, and thank you so much for supporting this video. also want to give a massive huge thank you and shout out to Uncle Al. I've known this guy for a couple of years now and this collab has been sitting dormant for god knows how long. I know he was really busy leading up to this video, he's going through a lot of stuff worrying about his own channel and I really do appreciate the push to get everything I needed for this video back to me. So Al, once again, thank you so much buddy. If you're a fan of Al watching this video, hi, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. I hope I, hope I made your day today. And if you're someone who's never watched Al, Please, by all means, click on the smaller end card there when they pop up in just a couple moments. Click on the smaller end card there and it will bring you to his video on Donkey Kong Country Abridged. He does a lot of great comedic dub stuff involving all your favourite characters. All of the Spongebob crew and even your boy Hugh Neutron. You can also click on the little profile picture there and it will help you subscribe to his channel. It'll go... wherever the hell it's gonna go, I, 
I still don't know how to design these end cards properly. But click on that and you'll subscribe to his channel and you'll give him all the more support. But if you enjoyed this video and you like my stuff, why don't you hit the subscribe button and become a fellow chap yourself? And maybe you could like the video or even share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're really sure you want to watch more from me, if you click the bigger end card that will bring you to my previous video on my top 5 characters I want to see in Super Smash Bros Ultimate. But I'm going to wrap this video up now guys, once again thank you all so much for watching, shout out to Uncle Al, go check him out. But that's it from me guys, I will see you in the next video. Ok I'm going to go now, bye bye. Today's story is Tuffy the Jeep. Here's Tuffy with four wheel drive. Here's his spare wheel. That makes five. See his canvas top come down. His roll bar shines on the way to town. Down through the river and up the bank. He is so strong. He's like a tank. Over sharp rock, fuck, over sharp rocks, and out of tight squeezes. Tuffy can go wherever he pleases, like on the floor. Go the fuck to sleep.